Hello everybody, I'm going to explain a bit the tool we recently proposed in Methods in Ecology and Evolution to decouple and combine functional and phylogenetic dissimilarities between species. We will try to represent visually what we think our tool is doing with the data in order for you to see the potential of the methods we are proposing. For more details on the R script and the approach, please have a look at our paper. So, let's start. Imagine that we have a community or pool of species with very different leaf type or plant sizes. Here we represent the extent of such diversity by the size of this oval shape reflecting trade dissimilarities. Imagine then that some species get lost or that species are more functionally similar in their size and the diversity in traits decreases. Hence, the size of the oval shape also decreases. Now, consider that we do not have only information about trait dissimilarity between species, but also how distant they are phylogenetically. These two sources of ecological dissimilarity, functional and phylogenetic, can be completely independent from each other, with evolutionary related species being as functionally different as unrelated species. See the example here. Thus, the two oval shapes, functional and phylogenetic dissimilarities, do not overlap, as they bring different information. However, functional and phylogenetic dissimilarity can also overlap when traits have high phylogenetic signal and phylogenetic related species are more functionally similar. Here, you have such a transition between these two opposed cases, from no overlap between functional and phylogenetic dissimilarity and the case of maximum overlap in the case of a high phylogenetic signal. We call this overlap as joint dissimilarity. Now, why such dissimilarity is important? Recently, it has been proposed that functional and phylogenetic dissimilarity can be combined together in order for phylogenetic information to provide a complement to trait information. This could be particularly important to account for potentially unmeasured traits provided they have a high phylogenetic signal, of course. This combination is generally resolved by doing a weighted sum of traits and phylogenetic dissimilarities. Clearly, the greater overlap between traits and phylogeny, which is when there is a high phylogenetic signal in the traits considered, the most important effect of joint dissimilarity on the combination of traits and phylogenetic information. We can thus predict that when combined traits and phylogeny, with this approach, the species that are functionally different will be even more different because we are like summing twice their large dissimilarity. We are actually not sure if this complies exactly with the real aim of combining functional and phylogenetic dissimilarity. Instead, we propose an approach to quantify the extent of trait dissimilarity which is independent of phylogeny and which we call the couple functional dissimilarity, here in red. Similarly, we propose also an approach to quantify the extent of phylogenetic distances independent from traits, which we call the couple phylogenetic dissimilarity, here in blue. This decoupling is done first using the residuals of models in which functional distances are explained by phylogenetic distances, second using a model in which phylogenetic distances are explained by functional distances. This as detailed in our recent publication in Methods in Ecology and Evolution, is done using redundancy analysis, RDA, combined with phylogenetic eigenvectors. Here we can see how the portion of the coupled similarities becomes smaller when the overlap between traits and phylogeny increases. This way, if we want to combine distances from traits and phylogeny, maybe we can just sum only the parts of phylogeny which is not already accounted by the traits considered, right? So we do not sum twice the joint dissimilarity, but just the part of phylogeny which is independent from traits, here in blue. Another interesting application of the approach proposed is that the decoupling can zoom on some parts of the ecological dissimilarity between species, which cannot be done by using only trait or phylogenetic dissimilarity alone. Let's imagine that we have a pair of species which is functionally and phylogenetically similar, for example pair A and C in the figure, and one pair which is very different, pair A and G. 
what the decoupling will do in the case of high phylogenetic signal is to zoom on species that are more phylogenetically close. Thus, it will magnify the dissimilarity between them. For example, it will increase the differences between species A and C, while decreasing the prevailing effect of species that are already phylogenetically far from each other, as species A and G. Notice that this is a sort of phylogenetic correction to account for phylogeny when assessing trade dissimilarity. We do not like very much the term correction, rather we think that these approaches allow to focus on different aspects and scales of the differentiation between species. But the approach is, in a sense, based on the same principle of the so-called phylogenetic correction approaches. Here we show, using simulation results, the case of increasing the similarity between phylogenetically closely related species and the decreased dissimilarity between phylogenetically isolated species when we use the coupling of traits from phylogeny. Here, trait evolution was simulated to follow Brownian motion, causing high phylogenetic signal. Of course, in the case of absence of phylogenetic signal, we showed in the paper that this effect disappears and the coupling does not change the similarity between species at all. We then applied our framework to a huge data set of 500 species-rich meadows plots, extracted from the Czech National Phytosociological Database and using traits from the database LEDA and phylogeny information from Daphne. Our question was if existing species were more or less functionally different between them compared to random expectations. Interestingly, species appear to be, in most of the meadows, as functionally and phylogenetically more similar between them than expected by chance. However, using the coupling, in 5 or 12 tests, functional dissimilarity between species was greater than expected by chance. Thus, altogether, this indicates that coexisting species tended to differentiate between them, particularly within closely related species, like within graminoids, for example. The coupling could be also used when testing functional turnover across gradients. Imagine that the trait turnover is observable only within pairs of congeneric species, like with body size changes with latitude. This is what happens if we compute functional and phylogenetic dissimilarity, and how the coupled dissimilarity would look like. In practice, without using the coupling, it would be impossible to detect the functional turnover occurring within clades, and this would be overshadowed by the effect of between clades differences. Thus, this approach seems very promising to explore the role of adaptation along environmental gradients. In conclusion, we think that the approach has different applications, which we invite you to test using our R function, the couple. You can find the function as Appendix 4 in our paper in Methods and Ecology and Evolution. We hope you will find it useful in your work. And please contact us for dubs and suggestions. Thanks a lot.